Okay, it's all good. Thank you so much. So I'm going to keep this here. <laughs> so without further ado, um, our very special guest today is a race car driver, uh, is someone that I can call a friend as well. We've been uh, knowing each other for some time through the, through the racing circuit, I guess. Um, and uh, he's been, I think we met each other when we were in Audi uh, MS Cup. I believe, yep. and um, I didn't race. He was, but uh, without further ado, this is Eddie Lee Fong from Hong Kong. So, Hi welcome Eddie Lee uh, to our RG Live. Uh, we worked together last year as well on the uh, on the Audi uh, RA LMS, uh, uh, not the LMS, but the, the yeah the GT3 car uh, with Hello Kitty. Um, had a really really good uh, reception, I think, to the car. I think yeah. everybody, everybody at, at least at the track, really liked it. Unfortunately, it was still during COVID, so you know myself or the whole team couldn't go. So you're the only one who could see kind of the um, the crowd's reaction. But uh, tell us a little bit about last year. Maybe we'll start start there first before you introduce yourself. Like, what was it like uh, in terms of when people s saw this? Like, is it is a con not a conventional livery, obviously. So, it's kind of, what was the feedback? Like, was how was it? Uh, for me, it was great considering the circumstances. Yeah. Um, I think last year we were just one month shy of the uh, COVID unlock. Yeah. But uh, uh, I think online we had a lot of presence uh, through IG, through Facebook. Um, we went for a more old school design yes. with the patchy yeah. colors and yeah. the and the contrast, and I think it really stood out, especially in the in the images. And uh, a bit unfortunate, we, uh, Lady Luck wasn't really on our side during the races. Uh, up until then, we were showing good pace in practice and qualifying. Uh, we were kind of following the uh, international drivers. But at the end, um, in the race, I think it was race one, we had uh, unfortunately coming together mm -hmm. with a, a few other cars. Yeah. And so uh, our, our race ended prematurely. And uh, we had a all-nighter repair for race two which we managed to come back six. Almost couldn't make it the race two, but really fortunate to the t like to the team's effort. It got to, like we were all very nervous, like obviously from Hong Kong, like just looking in Hong from Hong Kong, but um, overnight the car was fixed and then uh, it raced and then it finished in, in P6. Um, there was a really good qualifying pace as well, third, I think in Q1, yep. uh, Q2 was fifth. Uh, the race pace was really good as well. So uh, I think you did a really great job on the track. Um, so for, for those, of course, in Hong Kong, I think we're all from, very familiar with you, but maybe for the overseas uh, collectors, racing fans, uh, maybe tell us a little bit about you, you know, how you get into racing and all that. So my name is Adderley Fong. I'm from Hong Kong. Uh, started my racing career a bit out of the traditional way. Um, I didn't do go-karts, so I went to a track day with my father at 14, uh, met a race team, signed up for a training course when I was 15, and then went into racing when I could get my FIA license in 16. So I went directly into Formula Renault uh, for one year uh, in China. Then it was Formula V6 Asia. Then uh, at 18, I made my move into Europe. So German Formula 3, uh, mm -hmm. British Formula 3, GP3. In between, I did uh, a bit of LMP2. I did uh, Le Mans 24, Dubai 24. And in 2012 was when I made my move into GTs and uh, started off with the Audi R8 LMS Cup. Then I moved into uh, GT Asia. Uh, I was really lucky to get uh, into a Bentley program for uh, two, three years. And then now I'm back with Audi. And uh, uh, these few years I've been with the Uno racing team. Very cool. What, what was the first uh, car you drove like on, on the track, like the track day car? What was it? Um, I think it was a 993 Carrera 2. Oh, that's yeah. a bad that's car to start with. Yeah, that was, uh, was 14. <laughs> nice. But uh, knowing you, the, I think the really interesting thing is you know, you're not only a race car driver, you love cars in general. You, yeah. like, you, do, you do a lot of your mods and you know, fixing cars yourself. Tell us a little bit about that. Like how, when, does that, when, when did that start? What kind of cars are you into? What do you drive personally? Like maybe tell people about that. Well, I spent my young age in Canada. Uh, we went to a lot of air shows, bike shows, and mechanical stuff really struck an interest to me. And for me, I'm one of those uh, Generation 1 uh, PlayStation Gran Turismo players. Yes. So it all started with there. I uh, grew my car knowledge. Uh, I'm lucky to be in Hong Kong as well. We have a lot of car enthusiasts. So it's easy to see sports cars on the streets, uh, rare, rare cars. So eventually, the I wanted to be a car designer. I didn't know I wanted to be into racing. Mm -hmm. But when I went to a track day and I understood 
when I started to understand, you know, the race teams, uh, how people operated, wh how you got into racing, then it kind of, uh, it slowly lit a fire. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, personally, I drive a, a JDM cars. Okay. Um, I think they have a really good value for money. I started off with uh, um, an Nissan R35, then it eventually went to Evo 9, then I got an R34, um, now I got a Subaru RX-7. So yes, in, in the JDM family, and uh, till now I still keep my father's uh, 993 Carrera RS. So uh, just try to That's mod those really cars nice one, and yeah, maintain those sure. cars, yeah. Very nice. So for this year's Macau GP, uh, what was it like kind of after last year's was pretty good result, pretty good pace. Like what, uh, anything you, you've been doing for, for the past few months to prepare for this year's race in particular? Uh, so last year's program was a bit quiet with COVID. Uh, yeah. A lot of times we wanted to test, tracks weren't open. But uh, uh, the times that we were, we had a lot of quality testing. And so I got to understand the car really well. Um, I think that's what gave us our pace last year. And all the preparation we did, all the setup sweeps we, we managed to go through yeah. um, really helped. Same car this year, same tire. So combination will be the same. I think uh, uh, although the results didn't show last year, apart from qualifying, I think we kind of hit a sweet spot with the setup, okay. so I think we'll be going with something similar, uh, maybe slightly softer on the car setup, Okay. and then uh, uh, see where we go from there. All right, yeah. and then um, from our from our research, your first uh, race in Macau was in 2010 yes. uh, with Formula 3. Macau, for those of you who don't know, like Macau... It's been a home track for all of us in Hong Kong, obviously. I only watched, I've never driven on it, maybe on a sim. Uh, one of the most difficult tracks, I would say, not just from the people who raced it, but like, uh, or, or people from overseas, like all these greats, like Senna, Hamilton, all these guys. Um, what was your first race like? Because it, it's, a, it's a very daunting track. And so what, what was it? What, do you recall, like, what was that like? Um, I best describe it as I was just a passenger. Um, I was not in control of the car for the whole race weekend. I was just basically trying to keep it out of the walls. Um, I always tell drivers who, who I coach, who race there with me, it takes about three years for you to actually be able to push the car on the track because the first two years you're mm. getting to know the bumps, you're getting to know how much you can gamble um, going, going close to the wall before you actually hit the wall. I think on the first two years I actually did hit the wall. So there were experiences where Places I learned where not to go again and, and not to push that limit. And uh, you, you make a lot of mistakes, but you try to never give up. And, right. and eventually um, you pick up pace in Macau. So it was more your like third time that you actually got to really push a bit? Uh, where I felt I was, I was starting to explore the limits of the car. Right. Um, I wasn't really just afraid. Right. Um, I was able to, I had better car control. So I was, if anything happened, I was able to catch it and keep it out of the wall. Um, I had more tools in my arsenal, right. basically. I'm going to throw this question in as a as a interest of mine. Like from year to year, like how is is the track very different? I know you guys go through track walks and all that stuff. Is it from year to year? Is it very different from you know the corners or the straights, the bumps here and there? Like how how have you kind of seen from like your first race to your second, third up until last year? Like from race to race or year to year, how different is the track the track more or less is the same but of mm. course they went through different fixes and this and that i would say the macau track is relatively similar um over the course yeah. of i think it was uh what is it 2010 was my first race it's 15, 14 years yeah. now um, the track has got bumpier with age uh, with more cars being on the road um, but i think the biggest change was last year before we had uh, a regular light bulb, uh, yellow flag um, light indicators. Mm -hmm. So whenever you had a section, there would be a, a light box, which is black. And that was always kind of your brake marker for a lot of the drivers. Yeah. But last year they went LED. Oh. So they took out all these light boxes that have been there for right. 10, 20 years. And so last year you lost all your brake markers. Oh, and so, so for me, the biggest change was that because then you had to just uh, approach the corner by judgment of distance yeah. with your eyes. Yeah. There was no yeah. reference to say, oh, this is, uh, this is 50 meters, right, this is 100 right. meters. So that was the biggest change uh, for me in Macau last year. But uh, uh, I think they repaved the road two, three months before. So relatively, it's, it's pretty smooth for a street circuit. Okay, cool. Very cool. And then this one, again, I, I always wanted to ask drivers, like, are there any sort of pre-race rituals that you do, like, before qualifying, before the big race? 
some people like some people like to listen to music like what, is there anything that you kind of do to prepare your mind for the race um not really i would say i'm i'm pretty calm guy so uh for sure i get a little, little bit of nerves yeah. but there's nothing where uh, i'm i'm totally you know i have to zone out right. uh, i have to get people away from me yeah. um i'm generally pretty good uh when I was a kid, there would be a ritual where I'd get on the car on the right-hand side because it was a formula car. Mm. You could get on from the le right or the left being sat in the middle. Mm. But now being a GT car, you either get in on the left yeah. where the steering wheel is or, or on the right, dependent on the car. Right. So there's no s such ritual for me. Okay. Um, but I guess now I, I just kiss my wife before I get in the car. So that's, uh, that's, a, good, <laughs> that's, that's a, ritual. a good ritual. Yeah. And then are there is there anything like when you're now sitting on the grid, right, preparing to start the race, you know, you know who's in front of you. You know who's next to you on the grid, on the on the row. Who is behind you? How much of that do you actually think about? Like in terms of how much do you know that particular driver? Their their style, whether they're more aggressive, whether they're more passive. Are they gonna take you on that first corner? Like how much of that do you think about, or do you more just on focus on your start? Or like how much of that balance is is there? I think that's the, 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 the difficult question. Mm. It's uh, You have to balance it. Obviously, I, I'm thinking about the guys around me. Um, being a racing driver, I think uh, I have to, re it's my, part of my job to research, you know, what other people have raced, right. uh, what they've been doing through the year, watch their races, see how aggressive they are with the car, see how smooth they are with the car. And you have to think, you know, what they do on the start. Uh, generally, in FI GT World Cup, it's, uh, uh, everybody's good. Right. So so you know that they're going to go for it. They're, you know they're going to take the risks. Um, but that's the difficult part of being a race driver. You have to think about it. But again, not too much that it makes you nervous. Right. So it, it's a fine balance. Oh, yeah. You kind of have to process it and play it the night before. Right. But once you, you're about to go to sleep the, ra the night before the race, uh, that's when you have to switch off. And, and I think that's the hard part of being a racing driver. You have to process it, but also know when not to process it. And then for a track like Macau, since it's a, it's a street circuit, you only get a certain amount of laps. There isn't a lot of passing points. Like... How aggressive do you normally want to be in the in the start of the race? Um, generally, Macau is a sprint race, so I would say it's flat out. Um, I've learned from street racing that you have to go uh, pretty much flat out as, as soon as you get out of the pits. Hmm. Um, a lot of people warming up tires, uh, learning the track, so uh, or, or just getting you know into the overall yep. groove. So if you don't push and you get stuck behind them, uh, you maybe lose a lap in the session and. Any, every extra lap you get in the uh, street racing circuit is um, is beneficial. Right. Last question, what's your kind of personal goal for this year, if, if any? Um, for me, Macau is one of the pinnacle of racing, uh, pinnacle races of racing. So I think uh, the ultimate goal is to win it. I heard potentially there's about 26 cars. Uh, looking at the potential entry list, there's probably 20 guys that can win this race. So it's not going to be easy, but uh, we'll definitely give it a good push and uh, just leave no stone unturned. Very cool. Look at, well, looking forward to it. Um, the race is going to be uh, November 18th and 19th weekend. Uh, we do have two weekends for this particular race. Um, and for Italy, it is the um, 10th time that you've, been, you've raced in Macau, uh, which, is, which is interesting because it's also Macau GP's uh, 70th anniversary. Yep. And for Hello Kitty is the 50th anniversary for Hello Kitty, so there could be something there. I don't want to jinx it, but yeah. let's see what happens. Um, so that's that. With that, I think we, we come to the sort of the highlight of, of today's live, which is the delivery. So um, let's dive right into delivery uh, for, for this wait. year. So again, like I said, this is the 50th um, anniversary. Uh, we've done the car last year. Uh, and we want to cut, kind of ride on last year's uh, design, but make it something kind of different. So is it is considered like a 2.0. Last year we went with um, some of the more classic colors of Hello Kitty, as you can see, the red, the, the the yellow, the blue, the green, in different patches of the car. I think the Audi R8 suits it really well because of how the car is kind of designed. So yeah. we, uh, our designer did a really fantastic job on it. Of course putting in a lot of the Hello Kitty elements into all over the all over the car. Um, last year's number was 72. It was actually uh, something personal of mine. Uh, my daughter's lucky number, 72. Uh, she was born on July 27th, so we picked 72. There is a, like a for Ellie, uh, my, my daughter's name is Ellie, um, thing in the back. So 
having that set, we kept a lot of these kind of elements and, and sort of design cues to move it into this year. Uh, it's always really difficult to design a race car, uh, but we we try to have a lot of fun with it. So with, uh, with that said, let's go into um, the design. And here it is. So this is the 2023 Magachi P uh, uh, FI World Cup uh, design. And as you can see, uh, it looks, there is some similarity to last year's look. Uh, one thing I would say is this is the presentation version. It's not the race version per se. Uh, we're still missing some of the organizers' logos here and there. But you can see the 50th anniversary banner. Um, all the Hello Kitty um, icons are all the 50th anniversary design. Uh, we've used more the pastel colors. It's a little bit more girly, I guess. Um, but we wanted softer colors this time. So you still have the blue, pink, and then the white and the yellow. Um, and then our T logo is kind of floating around very much like the um, the Hello Kitty sort of icon uh, that is floating around. Uh, I really like the front where it, it almost like is like Hello Kitty kind of winking at you. So mm -hmm. whoever you're ch you're chasing, they're gonna see that. Mm -hmm. uh, they're gonna see that Hello Kitty. Um, your your first thought when you first saw this uh, design? Actually. Um... I want to thank Felix and the whole Tarmite Works crew. Uh, this design, I think the first time I saw it was last year, December, or maybe beginning of we January. We saw it really early. So we've been working on this a long time, a lot yeah. of details, a lot of back and forth uh, with Hello Kitty. But uh, at first, I wasn't really sure because I was more towards the um, uh, the last more uh, male colors yeah, of, yeah, of, yeah, of, the, yeah. of this yeah, design. Yes, yes. But then having worked with it, it, it kind of grew on with, grew on to me. And like you said, it's an evolution of, of the design yeah. last year. And I think it's even better. Uh, more modern, um, a lot more details inside that you will find when you when you really start to pick the picture out. And uh, yeah, it was, it's been a, a, a definitely a, a long journey, although it felt quick. And I'm, yeah. I'm really pleased with our livery this year. I'm glad. So... I can't wait to see the real car. Obviously, uh, last year I can only see it from the from the from TV. Uh, it stood out like the colors, the design stood out a lot to me or to to us or to the whole team. Um, this year, I think yeah, a little bit different, a little bit more modern. Uh, we didn't want a completely new design uh, or slap just slap something on there. We want to have a story behind it. So last year was the story. This year is kind of continue a continuation of it. Um, this year we'll run the number 50 number because yeah. it's 50th anniversary for Hello Kitty. Uh, so, yeah, so I think um, uh, we're going to probably start wrapping the car early November. Early November. Probably, right? So yeah. hopefully uh, and the team in Italy will, will send us some really nice photos of that progress and we'll, of course, show it on, on social media as well. Um, with that said, of course, with the, with that car and with us, of course, we're going to have a bunch of merchandise kind of following mm -hmm. the whole design. Um, so let's go over some of the merchandise. Of course, the first one being the model car. Um, as I mentioned, we started really early the, this time because uh, we wanted to have the model car ready. Yeah. Uh, and it takes okay. us a pretty long time to do that as well as the, um, the approval from Sanrio. It takes a long time. So... Uh, we had to just, you know, make the design, confirm it, approve it, and then put it on the motor car. So this motor car will be ready by the by the um, the Macau Race Weekend, and uh, let's uh, let's show everybody. So very much like the rendering, um, you know. Again, we have we will have a closed box, and I'll explain why that is. Uh, we'll just have everybody kind of look through uh, the pictures for now. Uh, as you can see, same as last year. The two different sides are different. This side has a Tarmac Works logo. The other side doesn't have a big logo where all the kind of Hello Kitty heads are kind of floating. Um, each size, the colors are also different, uh, same as last year. So we wanted to give give this a very creative look to it. So from every angle, it's going to be, you have a different look to it, basically, right? So um, we do have a closed box. And the reason is, Edley was kind enough to help us um, sign his signature on a hundred bases so for this this year's car uh we're gonna have 100 bases that are signed by Italy. um 
85 of them you signed with a gold uh, marker. Mm -hmm. 10 of them, uh, he signed it with a silver marker, so you only have 10 of those. And then five, uh, Edley actually wrote in like a, a, a small message. Secret you know. message. Uh, yeah, secret, secret message. message. So those yeah. would be one of ones because th there are five of them, five different messages. Uh, all of these 100 cards randomly placed. So they, they might appear in Macau or they might not. I, we don't know. We don't even, we have no idea. Um, so it's up to the factory. I, I, I just hope that they did a good job in sort of mixing it up. Um, and same as last year's car, we didn't announce this um, last year, but we got Italy also to sign 100 bases for last year's car. So again, randomly mixed. Last year's cars, the numbers were a, a little bit uh, different. So 87 in silver um, pens, uh, 10 with gold pen, and three special messages. And as you can see um, from from the screen, this is one of the, the, the gold ones that Italy signed. Uh, on the base, they will be all signed on the base, um, so that you, so you know it's authentic. Um, and so, as you can also see, even the base uh, have this um, this year's design on it. I think it looks really nice, uh, really eye catching. So hope hope all of you like it as much as we do. Um, and then, in addition to the model cars, we have. T-shirts, which actually we are wearing today, and then we're going to show you um, the images of the T-shirts as well on the on the screen. Uh, there are two different designs. So this one, again, uh, thanks, huge thanks to Uno Racing team. They made the really, really, really nice design. Um, there's Type A and Type B, both with a black and a white option to it. Um, anything you you kind of want to mention about the T-shirt, perhaps? Um, the limited quantity, so definitely. Get them as soon as you can. Uh, I, I think we will have a booth, yep. and uh, if if we do, then we have uh, the t-shirts there for sale as well. Yep. So come get them quick. I think we'll have them out for the first day that we open up, and uh, yeah, don't miss out. And uh, we're we're gonna uh, also ask, uh, probably ask Adelie to come out to the booth. Uh, if we again, if we do get a booth, um, to do some meet and greets, uh, take some photos, sign some t-shirts, sign some cars. Um, and uh, we'll have the once we have the everything confirmed and the schedules. Of course, we're going to post it on on our social media as well as Adelie's probably. Um, so those are the T-shirts. Again, two types of T-shirts, both white and black, available. Um, and then we also prepared for this year uh, some merchandise that we're going to give out actually. So when you buy the the cars, you actually get. Um, so if you buy two cars, you actually get the tote back. So this is the uh, special edition tote back. Um, that we've designed and then also if you buy just one car you also get the fan because in November is still pretty hot in Macau so uh, everybody on the stands basically need one of these so hopefully they will they'll get it and um, it's a very nice design uh, of course using this year's uh, uh, livery design and, and as well as the car on it so uh, this will be the tow back and the fan and um, again av hopefully available um, at at the Macau GP, um, so come by, say hello, get the cars. Uh, those will be the presentation version. Is of course it will be uh, limited, mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah. So that kind of wraps it up for for this uh, IG live. Again, huge thanks to Edelie for coming over to do it with us. Um, can't wait. I think it's been three years that I, I personally and team haven't gone to. Um, the Macau GP, so we're really looking forward uh, to to the race and and seeing the car, uh, taking pictures with it and having it on the track, just going around the track. I think it would be fantastic. And uh, and also big thanks to the Uno Racing team for preparing the car, the livery, everything for setting up the car really nicely. And uh, best of luck, of course. And um, we hope to have really good results. Uh, yes. For this year, and uh, you you have a lot of us cheering for you, and we sit on the in the on the in the in the grid and everything. So, thank you again. Uh, thanks to everyone who uh, tuned in to join us uh, for this uh, IG live with Adelie. We're gonna stop this session, this English session, and we're gonna have a Chinese Guangdonghua session, a Cantonese uh, session in a few minutes, uh, maybe five minutes. Uh, we'll take a break. And then we'll come right back with the uh, Cantonese version. So thanks, everybody, for joining. Thank you.